Yeah. Um, I'm Jim. This is Megan. This is Craig. Um, we were all on Chop Grill Masters together at some point. Uh, we've all traveled the country and cooked barbecue and everything all over the place. So, um, but we're mainly known for that. But we really mostly grill most of our stuff. Um, some of you I know. Some of you I don't. Um, but we're gonna just show you some of the dishes that we do on the grill. And we're going to give you some techniques that can kind of help you get through some of the things. Of course, thanks to our folks, our friends here at Royal Oak for coming on board. Um, thanks to Mark for coming to shoot video. Thanks to Jerry for coming from Buckhead Meat. And uh, thanks to everybody else for showing up. So we're going to let her get going. Yeah. You're good on the temperature on that grill. We'll make it work. Okay. That's part of So she's going to she's gonna do a dish. Yep. Craig's going to do a dish. And then I'm going to do a dish. And we're going to rotate back through. And then when we get done, we're just going to eat. <laughs> And I'm sure everybody's okay with that in general. Right. And, we may eat, and we may eat along the way, too. Yeah, so. yeah we may eat a little along the way since it's a smaller deal. And, but there's still pastries and coffee and drinks and sodas and orange juice back there. So help yourself. There's plenty of it there. Feel free. And, and I mean, interaction is important here. So along the way, any questions you've got, be it if, does it if it pertains to the dish, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's fine. Uh, if you want to ask me hunting questions, that's fine. If you want to ask me fishing questions, that's fine. I think he's got a duck call oh. with him, too. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah, you're still in my thunder. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. You said hunting. I just tried to you know, throw all that in But there. anyway, yeah, and, and having a good group like this, that interaction is, is going to be Because a, a lot of stuff we do, we do naturally. So we may not realize that it's something you haven't seen or done. So feel free to just, hey, I don't know what y'all are doing there or whatever because we do things without thought because we're around it all day, so she calls it live fire. Live fire cooking. Live fire cooking. So let's get live and let's fire cooking. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. My name is Megan Day, and I compete on the professional barbecue circuit under the team Burnt Finger Barbecue. It is not what you think. We do not burn our fingers. Uh, the story goes that my husband, Jason, would always cook food for buddies and friends and family and they would just eat platefuls and platefuls of the meat and forget the sides and then he started noticing guys were going over to the grill and grabbing it off the grill and they were burning their fingers every time so it's so good you burn your finger trying to get this food so that's kind of where that came about 10 years ago we're a decade in to competing uh, we have about 18 grand champions under our belt um, and we were very fortunate. We cooked the Memphis in May this last couple weeks ago. Ended up second in ribs, third overall. So yeah. that was that was a thrill and a half because we've never cooked in that style of competition before. So to go from Kansas City Barbecue Society where you're cooking four meats, turning it in, blind judging, sitting back, putting everything away. We were on pins and needles after you do these presentations to discover whether or not you're in the finals. And we were blown away when here comes Bob, our volunteer, back on his little golf cart to say, you guys finaled. And, and it, it was really special, too, because Craig and the team at U-Bonds was physically located around the corner. And we were screaming, and, and we were, I think ribs were the last to be notified that you got a, uh, in the finals. And we were hooping and hollering, and he came running around the corner, and he said, I heard the noise, and I thought, no. Yeah, I, I was standing over there just, just to kind of come in with you. Yeah. And, and I, I was on the rig, and, I, I, you know, you hear the, 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 the noise. Ricky Bobby heard them go crazy over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, but back behind us, and I, I just was thinking, I was like, that sounds like in the general vicinity of May. And I said, I got to go around there and look. And I walked around there, and sure enough, they, they had finaled. And I was as thrilled as she was, I Thank think. Thank you. But, yeah. I, 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 I freaked out because you have to flip everything and use the ribs that are left or if you had a all you know kind of an offset cook to to get ready and this time four judges were coming to your tent and you had to ha captivate four people not just one person so that you know that presentation could, it, we were like is it gonna transfer from a single person to being able to hold for people's attention and obviously we did did well and ended up second so anyway as we were all kind of talked about the fact that grilling grilling is really my much more my forte my husband really takes the lead on all of the barbecue um, we have a plan and we execute that plan with barbecue because it is low and slow and there's so many things that you have to do in order to get it timed just right 
Well, there's some downtime and there's a grill, so I feed everybody and I'm cooking for, we have two small children and we love family and friends. And so that's where I've really found some of my passion to be is a little bit more on the live fire, quick fire. And so uh, we're very blessed to have some sponsors that, you know, I have the chance to cook a lot because of using their equipment and different items. So I'm learning as we go. And when Chop called and said, will you come do this? I said, oh, ah, I think I will do that and then had some really nice success. Um, one of the things, and we'll talk more all, all about that throughout the day, but one of the things that I like to do is appetizers, something quick and easy to do for people that are hanging out. And these are called a Smoky Kansas City Jalapeno Cheese Squares. And that's where I'm from is Kansas City. And whoop whoop. And so my husband wrote a cookbook. Um, it's almost been nine years ago, launched on the Today Show. It's called Barbecue Makes Everything Better. And genuinely, what, what the, the premise behind it was, what do we do on a normal day-to-day -day basis that we can then take to the grill or the smoker and make it even better because it's now been barbecued? What are the tips and tricks and things we can do? So this is actually his mom's recipe that she used to make. And we were like, we could totally do that on a smoker or an offset grill. Let's go try it. And we did it, and now that's the only way we want to do it. So we've got... Uh, the smoky jalapeno cheese squares, what's gonna make it smoky for me, because we really don't have the luxury of having a pit here today, is I've got my little secret ingredient, some good old hickory powder. So that you can buy and then put into your dish if it's something that you're not able to actually ac accomplish from what equipment you happen to have or even the time that you have. So this is a great trick that I like to do for, I mean, even on deviled eggs, anything, adding just a little bit of this to give it, um, and you'll get to taste it. I, I put some on a little bit ago. But this is a really simple, easy recipe to put together. First thing you're gonna do, and I, if you want me to, I can read through the ingredients if you wanna write it down. Otherwise, let me know, and you can come up and take a picture of the recipe if you want to, but it is right out of the cookbook. So we do about 16 ounces of jalapenos, and I prefer the pickled jalapenos. Big Jim did me a big favor, and he actually pickled some for me, so these are very special jalapenos. I said, get me some jars. He goes, girl, I got you. I'm going to make you some. So I appreciated that, and so I'm going to do a rough chop on, and you can do it either way. If I, I guess you got to know your audience. If your audience can handle eating, taking a bite and eating a whole pepper in it, or, if, if, or maybe they don't and you want it to be easily to be picked out, um, the bottom of this recipe is going to be these chopped for me, I'm gonna go ahead and chop them up, um, but you can leave them whole if you want to um, on the bottom. So it's part of your crust base are gonna be these jalapenos. I'm gonna yep. show the recipe for the jalapenos. Yep. Too. Yeah, perfect. So you're gonna learn how to do these. So I just do a rough chop because I, I want them to be big enough that if someone wants to pick them off, shame. Can you, can you hear how crunchy they are? They're so crunchy, so good. It's a shame if they want to pick them off because you'll still get the flavor will be imparted in it, but they, I want to keep them just big enough that they can still do that, um, and, but yet someone's not just going to get a complete big surprise either. So super simple. I'm just going to use a disposable pan because there's no sense in getting anything other than that, getting your nice ceramic pans or anything dirty. So, so I'm just going to put those down in there. And magic of television. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those are looking good. So I'm going to put it in the camera. Yeah. I don't want to get, yep. getting brown on it. Yeah, we need to kind of just heat it for a little bit, and then we'll put it back on the fire. Okay. Um, so that's one of those adaption things. The fire was pretty hot, and I don't want it to burn before the egg sets. Um, and so uh, I'll give you a little, little more info. So just to give you the recipe, if you're writing it down, I do 16-ounce jar of pickled jalapenos or make your own. Big Jim's going to give you that. Two pounds of grated cheddar cheese. Two pounds. Mmm. So good. Cheese makes everything a lot better. A lot better. And then what I do is after that cheese is grated, um, and I like to fresh grade cheese because when you get it out of the packages, I just think it's got that powder on it. There's something strange uh, on it. So I, I prefer to have a good, a big old buy a chunk and grate it if you can. Um, and then I put, I don't know, probably two teaspoons, a teaspoon, it kind of depends on how, how heavy you want your flavor. You just gotta play with it. Um, and I'm, I mix it in with my cheese. So I, pow I powder this over my cheese. Um, and 
you know, we just did, and I had great help. We had some professional cheese grater. Just, here this you know, morning. grating, grating up the cheese, so just a big old chunk. Just flew in last night. Flew just to in cheese. just to do it. So I'm going to I'm going to sprinkle in my cuz I don't quite need all that cheese. It's so delicious. But I'm just going to sprinkle in a little bit of that hickory smoke powder. Break it up if I if I need to cuz sometimes it comes in little chunks just as best I can just to give it a good cuz I want you I want you to be able to actually taste it. Cuz there's no sense in putting it in there if you can't. Cuz this is such a simple recipe. And then you'll get these kind of clumps. Just break them up powder them out as best you can and I'm gonna mix it in with my cheese and so that base is those jalapenos I try to do again a little meticulous probably more than some to make sure that my jalapenos are potent, coating the bottom because once you put this cheese over the top of them they kind of stay put they don't really move so you'll right where you put them is where the concentration of them will be they don't they don't move because the cheese there's so much and it's head so it's it sits heavy it sits heavy so I just make sure that my jalapenos are evenly distribution in there and I've got my two zone fire for my grill I want to to put all the coals off to the side as best I can because in essence you're using it you're baking is what you're gonna do and so then I'm gonna pour on the cheese. I can smell the hickory powder. If anybody wants to come up here, you're very welcome. Take a look at it. See what I'm doing. It's super complicated. Um, again, we're cooking in parking lots and in festival grounds, so I we try to keep it as simple as absolutely possible. Mmm, easy schmeasy. So you get all that cheese in there. Then again, Magic of Television, I had some wonderful help um, stirring up. I've got in here, ready for this, eight eggs. Eight eggs. So you got two pounds of cheese, eight eggs, 16 ounces of your jalapenos. And then, again, as best you can, evenly distribute those eggs right over the top. You're, you're basically making a crustless quiche. Um, but they are decadent. All right, just like that. I kind of give it a little wiggle. And then we'd love. For them.